Hi, so it's Friday and I just finished work. Before I start in on a new project and my sewing room just becomes a complete mishmash and mess of wires and fabric and all sorts of things, I wanted to give you a tour while it's still nice and tidy and clean. So grab a cup of something warm and cozy Let's get settled in and I will give you a tour of my sewing space. So you can see that the sewing machine is sitting in kind of this nook and it's between two closets and a built-in chest of drawers. The first thing obviously is the sewing machine and I will do a separate video about this machine, a bit of information about why I chose this and what I was looking for. The particular table that I have this on is a gladiator workbench. It's a small, relatively small workbench. Obviously that fits within this space, but it's super smooth, really nice, very stable. It doesn't shake or rattle and I happen to have it at a relatively low height. It is technically adjustable, but it's a little bit of a project to adjust it. So just keep that in mind if you're looking for a similar table. Here I keep a little waste bin for threads or small bits of fabric that I don't want to just toss on the floor. And then over on this side, I have my accessories box. This is where I put my spare feet, extra bobbins that have already been used in different colors, some spare empty ones, and a few different needles. This little drawer, I'm able to keep spare stitch plates. This is a straight stitch plate. I didn't think I would use this accessories bin. It's really handy. I use it all the time. And it's nice to just have stuff at hand and I can see what, see what I have. This print, is actually a wrapping paper sheet that I just loved. I just loved it. I loved the darkness of it. I love the style. It is by Open Sea Design Company. So for my sewing machine, it's really important that I have a task light, which I have turned on right now. When it's off, you can see it's just pretty dark here, but this light is really essential. I use and I sew a lot of dark fabrics, so dark thread on dark fabrics makes it really necessary to have a good, a good lighting system. Up here I have threads in my most frequently used colors, blacks, whites, greens, pins and clips nearby, or at least a, a destination so I could toss them in. Down here, I have an extra charging station. And then over here is my sewing machine cart. So I try to keep my sewing supplies minimal. And I, I feel like if I said this to someone who didn't know me or didn't know sewing very well, this wouldn't feel very minimal, but this is almost the extent of what I use for sewing. So all of my regular tools are in here. You can kind of just peek inside. This little box I use to keep seam rippers. There's a couple screwdrivers in there. Mini scissors and cutters are in here. I think I have a bodkin there on the bottom. This tray has writing and marking tools plus some tweezers and a seam gauge. The tweezers are for um, the serger primarily, as well as any bits of thread or anything that I might need to pull out of the machine. And then some marking tools, pens to make notes on my patterns, and cleaning, some cleaning brushes. This is a cleaning brush for the machine. Actually, to clean my sewing machine before or after a project, I actually use makeup brushes. So makeup brushes are, these in particular, are very bushy and very soft. 
So I find that they're very great for kind of gathering and you can see all the lint that's kind of popping out of those. They're really good for kind of picking up lint without kind of jabbing it in further to the machine. So I use these to kind of be really gentle and just pluck out some thread. As for which kind of makeup brush, I mean really the, the cheapest you can find. I think this was part of a really inexpensive set. So I'm really happy that I'm able to repurpose those. And then back here I have some pins, fray check, some chalk, some Taylor's chalk, and then these are oil, machine oil, which I tried to do, I, I try to remember to do, I should say, after each project, just a tiny bit. This is uh, pins, a little wearable pin cushion that I purchased on Etsy, tape measure, this little, this little guy, this magnetic, and has hand sewing needles on it, pencil sharpener, and then down here I have my serger threads. In the video that I do for my sewing machines, I could talk a little bit more about serger threads. On the side here, I have some adhesive hooks that I use to attach my scissors. So applique scissors here, my favorite Kai dressmaker shears are in here. These are fabric scissors, they are Mundial. So these are um, not too expensive and they're really great fabric cutting scissors. And then some tiny little embroidery scissors. These are getting dull, so while they're very pretty and nice to look at, I wouldn't necessarily recommend them. I've had them for, I don't know, a handful of months and they're already getting kind of dull, um, even with threads. So I'll, I'll use them while I have them and as, as long as I can get them to work, but I wouldn't necessarily send you a link and say, you've got to go and get those. I use a regular dining chair. So the height of the machine, the height of the table, and then the height of this chair actually work really well for me in terms of ergonomics. Uh, not having an armrest helps me not get too comfy, which means I'll sit upright. And then I also wanted to show you that in order to get the right height, I actually added risers to this particular chair. So ergonomics could be really important to make sure that you're really comfortable where you're sewing. I've got mine in a really good sweet spot, but it took a lot of practice and trial and error to find what would work best. This is the first closet. We'll go in there in a little bit. I first wanted to show you my table for my serger. It's sitting on a vintage writing desk and I have had this for a really long time. One of my good friends was nice enough to give me this table back when we were much younger. It is a vintage table though, so it's not one for sort of solid sewing machine or serging. It actually shakes, rattles, and rolls while I'm using it, which is totally fine while I'm using it. The only issue is when I'm recording videos, but I think you all can understand that a serger can kind of rumble and roll. So that's my serger. And again, when I do a video on sewing machines, I can talk a little bit more about that. And the seat that I use at this serger table, it's like a tractor style seat. It's on wheels, so it's really functional. I don't spend too much time sitting at the serger, so the actual ergonomics are not such such a concern. Down here, I have a basket of camera equipment, and it's a topic for another video to go into how I record these videos, but that's where I keep a lot of that stuff on hand. And in this drawer, I have a mishmash of things. So these are accessories for a different sewing machine. Um, I keep some spare scissors. These are feet for a different sewing machine. I do keep Taylor's chalk on hand. Sometimes you serge over your notches in a pattern piece. So it's really handy for me to just grab this, chalk my notches, and then go from there. I have bobbins in here for a different sewing machine. So that is my serger. Over here we have a guest bed. This is actually where my kids will spend time with me while I'm sewing downstairs. So really important that I have a really nice, comfortable, family-friendly place for them to sit. And then over here is my ironing station. So this cart has my pressing tools. So there's pins, there's clips, 
There's uh, starch and water bottles there on the bottom. And there's my tailor's ham, press cloths, some snips. All of these things, or many of these things, I showed you in my equipment's equipment video. It's the same cart as this one here. Butcher block accessory that goes on the top, so it's helpful for storage. But the key thing that I want to highlight is that for this ironing board, it's an extra wide ironing board, so I use it as a work surface in addition to ironing. So in this room overall, I'm either going back and forth between this sewing machine over here, over to the serger, or over here to this ironing board slash work table. Oh, this particular ironing board, if you're curious, is the C model by Brabantia. And it is really great. It also has this kind of wire shelf at the bottom. And then if I do use it as a work table, I use this smaller size cutting mat. And then I could put, I can't use the iron with this, but I could put fabric, I could put a project and I could press pins without feeling like I'm gonna puncture into this. I have another cutting mat that is over here and that also works. So having a couple cutting mats in different sizes is helpful if you are using different surfaces or if you don't have a primary work table or cutting table. So I'm left-handed, so I have my iron here on the left. Although if I were right-handed, this guy is adjustable. So you can mount your iron on that side and you can have it kind of switched around so that then you're kind of set up a little bit differently. So that's my ironing station slash workstation. I do keep this extension cord for the iron. That's just how I actually power it off at night. Otherwise it would just kind of stay on in standby mode and I really just don't like to use any kind of standby electricity. This is my desk and computer. This is where I get all my work done. Okay, so now I'm gonna take you into the closets and the built-in dresser. I'm not gonna to spend too much time in this particular closet right here. Let me turn the light on. So this is where I keep my mannequin. Really try not to leave my mannequin out too much, but this is closets really designated for, you know, homewares, office supplies, overstock sort of stuff. I have a vintage table in here, stool because I'm short stuff, but my mannequin, just to kind of give you a little bit of background, just for reference, it's not my size. It is mainly used for hanging. So I will hang garments on here. I will position it on here just to have a sense that I'm working in a project correctly, but it's most definitely not a custom size for me. I, I lost the original knob on here. So this is a separate little hat hook that I got off of a different hook from an old thing from anthropology, I think. I've had this for a very long time. I think it's from, I don't know, it says Elegance Los Angeles. It's, it's decorative, it's for hanging. I don't use it for fitting. And as you just saw, when I don't use it, I actually just store it out of the room. It kind of freaks me out if I'm walking by and I see like a, a body shape in there. We were lucky enough when we moved in here that this house has a lot of great built-ins. So this one in particular has uh, double doors at the top and I keep a lot of my stationery or pencils, pens, office supplies in here. I took a stab at creating a sewing journal, but I really lost interest in that. I feel like the clothes kind of speak for itself. I did purchase this Merchant and Mills uh, notions box and I love it so much that I've kind of kept it packaged and once every handful of I don't know weeks or months I kind of open it up again as if it's a, a new gift for myself but anyway so that's all there right now this is stationery pens um, tax staples I used to be a big Yoshitomo Nara fan so my sister got this for me 
in Japan. Um, let's see, Bakewell biscuit tin and pens, pencils. Oh, washi tape, tons of washi tape. My daughter uh, likes to come in here and use a lot of these supplies for her own projects. Pens, pencils, gel pens. Just some fun stationary items in there that make me happy. In here is a lot less cheerful. Tech wires. Um, I have my Serger care kit here, a care kit. It has oil and needles and things like that. This makeup case, I keep portable chargers for my laptop. This is a Marks and Spencer cookie tin that I use, or biscuit tin, I should say, that I use to store stationery. Pantone swatch book from my graphic design days. And, oh, I did wanna share this. This is how I discard my old sewing needles or rotary cutter blades or old pins. So it's full. I have a little note in here that says careful. And then when the time comes, I'm gonna find a local refuse place where I can get rid of these safely. Exactos, Exacto blades, uh, art pencils again from my graphic design days, extra tape for patterns. All right, in here we have sewing supplies. We've got different threads, a mix between cotton and all purpose. Here are buttons, buttons and snaps, the extra kind of cutting tools, tape measure, sewing machine needles. These are my collection of Kylie and the Machine or similar brand um, garment labels. In the back here, I have a stash of elastics in different size. This vintage Tupperware was my mom's. These are all of her vintage buttons, many of which she took off of old garments from the 70s and 80s. And, uh, this is one of my favorites. This button card, 40 cents, how about that? Lansing. So really precious to me, some of these vintage sewing supplies that were my parents. Zippers, I've got this huge sack of zippers. Jean tack buttons. I do like a good button fly and I like to use denim or jean tack buttons. So I buy them in bulk. Old rotary cutters, old snips, pinking shears. When I travel, I don't really take my sewing machine with me. So. This pouch has threads, uh, some wax, and hand sewing needles so that I could practice my hand stitching while I travel, which is actually not very frequent. So before you get too impressed, just know that I actually don't travel all that much. All right, so in here, this is fabric. So. This is the fabric that is too small to make a garment or it's too big to go into the scrap basket. So small projects just that don't have a use yet, but most certainly will. I also have some old linen curtain panels that I've made in the past where I would like to repurpose that fabric. So a majority of my patterns are on my computer. If I have printed them out and made the garment, then they are in here, in this file folder system. They're not in any order. Sometimes I think I put the newest one in the back, but I also think sometimes I put it here. Either way, I could find it. Then, um, let's see, we have some labels. Here are some of the commercial patterns, so Simplicity and McCall's. I do have a little bit of a system here where I put a pink tape if I've made the pattern. So the ones that don't have pink tape, I haven't, I haven't opened and I haven't made. I also have some indie patterns back here, um, like this Merchant and Mills September jacket. Um, I think I have some closet core. Yeah, I have some really good, 
really good indie patterns that are printed here too. Generally speaking, I get PDF patterns. I have a hard time, my eyesight's not that bad, but I have a hard time discerning between the lines on many of the tissue printed patterns. And then in the back here is my small collection of yarns or abandoned knitting projects. So let's go into this closet here. I'm using this dresser to store my fabric and then I have a system. So at the top here, these fabrics are projects that are in the works, as in I'm working on them in the next four days, the next two weeks. It's all out here so that I don't go rummaging into these drawers getting distracted. This is my reminder system that I've got goals, I've got plans, and I need to work on those projects. This basket back here is an assortment of different prints, different quilting cottons, and it's what my daughter uses for her own kind of experiments and sewing, and she knows that she can look in this basket and choose a fabric without having to ask me for permission. Whereas if she thought these were up for grabs, that would, that would not be the case. Also up here, I have my two other sewing machines. I'll do a video about my sewing machines, what I like about them, why, why I have them, how I acquired them. This one is my Juki TL18 QVP. And in the back here, we have a Kenmore 1914. So that's a vintage Kenmore sewing machine. And this was the sewing machine that I learned how to sew on. So it's my parents and I actually have, these are the original accessories for that vintage Kenmore. This is the um, instruction book. Looking forward to doing a video about that machine sometime in the future. This right here is a pattern for the Regency dress for my daughter. I haven't decided to fold it up yet. It's kind of a lot to fold up. Here I have some patterns that I'm hanging. I'm using at the moment these plastic pant hangers to hang patterns. Not my first choice. If I had to do it over again, I wouldn't purchase these plastic hangers, but I have them, I'm gonna use them. I'm gonna use them until I can't use them anymore. So I also have pattern hooks. Also a really good viable option. If you like to hang your patterns, pattern hooks can work. So in the end, I think these will eventually get fold it up but anytime I consider that like this is the pattern for the peppermint magazine everyday dress every, every time I look at this and think oh let me fold it up and put it away I'm like no wait I'm gonna make it one more time I'm gonna make it one more time and then I'll put it away up here we have my collection of sewing themed books it's either sewing or it's sewing inspiration Some of them are new, some are vintage. This over here is my selection of, of vintage that I actually really like. I like these Adele Margolis um, books a lot. I will do, I think, a video on some of these. I have this book about batiks, this vintage book, which is just incredible. Actually, I'm just gonna give you guys a peek right now because I can't resist. So this I found at a library book sale batiks and how to make them. Looks like it was printed in 1919, but what's amazing about this, for any book lovers or graphic designers out there, I don't know, this is not, I'm recording this on my iPhone so you can't see the texture, but you could feel the print. So good. Anyway, I will have to do a video about that sometime and show you guys. Um, yeah, that was just so good. Love those vintage, vintage vines. So video on books to come. Okay, couple more things, couple more things. So along here on the side in the closet are these patterns that are in tubes. So I have some fabricstore.com patterns. I have a couple kits. So Clum House bag making kits. I haven't made these yet, but they're ready. They're ready for me. They're waiting. 
This is a uh, bag, it's Pelon, uh, what is it called? The word for what you use to keep structure in your bags that you make. So that's what this is. In here, top drawer of the dresser, this is my interfacing drawer. So I have different types of interfacing. Some I've had more success with than others. My go-to interfacing is this Palmer Plush uh, Perfect Fuse, either light or Palmer Plus Plush Sheer. Those are my go-tos. So I have it in black, I have it in white. I haven't used the waistband product yet, but it's not to say that I'll never use it. But that's one interfacing that I haven't had any problems with um, bubbling or puckering after after it's laundered. Here is my fabric, apparel fabric that are printed. So that's my organization strategy here. Printed or uh, special. So this is a, a lining fabric, obviously it's not printed, but you can see I have some prints and some florals stacked throughout here. I also have this um, kind of stripe this is poppies. This is linen poppies uh, imported from Japan. I ordered it in three colors and it was a big, I think this is the most that I've ever spent per yard. This tag is for something else that I've ever spent per yard for fabric. And now I'm just terrified to use it because I mean, it's beautiful. I love it. So I have it in the blue, green, and the orange. And then I think I have some rayon and some jacquard in here. So these are more just like special fabrics or things that I plan to wear sometime in the future. Here is my drawer of linen. So linen in different colors and linen that I purchase kind of in bulk. I, I will buy a lot when it's on sale and I will try to buy it in colors that I know will suit me and um, and yeah I don't always launder it before I store it so a lot of this hasn't been washed yet. I do have a lot of white and I have a lot of black and I use both of those to make wearable twalls because again I, I try to purchase them at a really good price otherwise I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to afford such linen. All right, in this drawer, so this is a heavy one. This is my denim, my denim or canvas drawer. And um, I try to keep my fabric wrapped just to kind of keep it clean, actually from the dresser. But I have black denim, light white denim, blues, I think I have a green in there. There's a couple of raw denims as well. I have made jeans, but I don't love to wear jeans, even if I make them myself. But I do like um, like sailor style trousers in denim. That's something that I, I like to have denim on hand for. And then this down here is kind of just an, an excess of both of those last two drawers. So I have some prints, I have some linen blends cotton, hemp canvas, a chambray that I just didn't put in the other drawer. And then this, this diamond denim is something that I'm excited to use. It, when you wash it, it puckers and it looks really interesting. I thought it would look nice as a really like small little, little jacket. All right, so that is the sewing room. There is one more thing that I want to share, and that's my cutting table. So we are going to go out this door, and I will apologize in advance. There might be an echo in this room that we're about to go into. So this is my cutting table. The height of the table works really well. This is just a homemade table. There isn't anything fancy about it at all. 
And then I actually put a, you can see there's a little brass thing. This is a sliding closet door that I put on top of the table. So I really just maximized what I could find in the house to make a counter height table. This cutting mat is from Joann's. It is Sullivan's, so it's nice and big. This is a pattern that I purchased on eBay and it just came. So I have it set out here so that I can unpack it and give it a look through. This seat, <laughs> you know, you, you're working and sometimes you just have to sit down. It's the same chair that's in my um, sewing room, but I just made this little slip cover to protect it. This is my basket of fabric scraps. So all the teensy stuff and my plan eventually is to put it into um, an ottoman. I saw that there's a pattern, Closet Core Patterns has an ottoman pattern that you can use for your scraps. This down here is a paper trimmer and it's how I trim my printed pattern pieces. And this is a roll of tissue that I use to trace patterns or to extend pattern lengths. If I make a dress longer, I'll use that as the gap filler. I don't always trace my patterns, but um, when I do, that's, that's pretty handy. On the side of my cutting table, I put these same adhesive hooks and I have um, paper, cutting scissors, some design rulers. I don't use these too frequently. They're helpful if I am grading a pattern or if I'm extending a pattern size and I need to kind of extend the line. Um, I've got pins, my pattern notcher, marking tools, highlighters if, I'm, if I am tracing a pattern or even if I'm not, sometimes I'll highlight my size just to kind of keep my eye. Again, my eyes play tricks on me and it's really helpful for me to see. These are all of my pattern weights. So pattern weights, this little anvil I use for hammering denim tack buttons, but I also use it as a pattern weight. Some vintage irons, a couple of them were already in this house when we moved in. My tape dispenser, also a really good pattern weight. And then I have these other things um, for pattern weights. These are beverage coasters, but they work really great for pattern weights as well. Um, electric pencil sharpener, metal ruler from my design school days. But yeah, so this is the project that I'll be working on next, the Ashling blouse and dress. Um, I just need to trim out the paper and tape it together. I'm getting to be intrigued about projector patterns. If anyone is watching this who has experience using a projector to cut out their pattern pieces, let me know. I, I'm intrigued to learn more. I would be happy to not have to print. And in fact, this is my little printer setup. I, I do use paper that's extra thin, um, but if I could avoid using paper altogether, that would be incredible. That's this over here, cutting table. It's where I do the first part of my projects. And then when I'm done, I clean that up and then I head right back in here into this sewing room. If you have any questions or thoughts or, or ideas, or if you want to share what, you know, if anything that I showed you stood out and you're like, hey, you know, I have an idea how, how you might do this a little bit better, let me know. I learn from you and would love to hear what you think. I mentioned that I'm really interested in learning more about projectors for sewing. So I really need it. If any of you watching have any information about projectors or how to use projectors for sewing, Leave me a comment below on a helpful resource or any kind of tips that you found in your own research. It would really help give me some direction on how to take that next step with my sewing process. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I'm so glad that you made it until the end. I'm going to gear up with my sewing machine video next. So thank you so much and I will see you again very soon.